Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another episode of Jum'a Nights. Today we're going to be starting a new series which is in relation to the tafsir of the Quran, whereby we're going to be exploring a variety of different theological topics through the lens of the Quran. But before we can do that, we need an introduction to the tafsir series. And what better place to start than where Allah starts in the Quran with the basmala where he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The first thing we need to get through is the meaning of the Basmala linguistically. Before we start to explore the significance and the representation of these blessed verses in the Quran that say these blessed words, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The meaning that we usually find in translations is, I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. But let's break this down further using the Arabic language. The first letter of the Basmala is the Ba. And this letter is very, very important because there's a lot of differences about what it can mean. Because there's different types of ba in the Arabic language, the same way that we've discussed in previous episodes where we have different types of wow, the ba is no different. And this is the first letter of the Quran and the first letter of the Basmala. So the scholars have actually gone into a lot of depth with regards to what this ba could represent. There are four possibilities as to what the ba in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim represents. The first of them is ba al-ibtida, which is the ba that acts as a beginning to something. The second is Ba al Qasam, right? Which is the Ba that is to take an oath using the Ba. And the third is Ba al Sababiya, which is the Ba that acts as a cause. It uses something to build upon as a cause to, to reach a certain effect. And the fourth of them is Ba al Isti'ana, which is to seek help using that Ba. So we see these four possibilities of what the ba in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim can represent. So the scholars differ upon the reason why this ba was used. And as you can imagine, this ba and the type of ba that it is would change the translation of the Basmala entirely. So understanding the translation of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is dependent on the ba at the beginning, right? The four translations that are possible would therefore be I begin in the name of Allah, I swear by the name of Allah, I seek help in the name of Allah, or with the effect of the name of Allah. So we can see here, when talking about the Basmala, the level of depth that there is, even discussing the first word, the first letter of the Quran, is massive. It changes the meaning of the verse and it shows you the importance of the Arabic language because in the translations, we don't get this level of nuance. This level of nuance isn't even there for the Basmala in the different translations, let alone the rest of the Quran. And that's why there's so much emphasis in our religion on learning the Arabic language, being able to navigate it at the highest level. And that's what the Imams expect of us. The Imam said, Learn Arabic to be able to understand our sayings because we are an eloquent people. And that also no doubt applies to the Quran first and foremost. Another thing is many of us don't actually even realize. So like now when we've discussed these four different types of ba, if we weren't already familiar with this, you would be thinking when we recite the Quran, when we say the basmala before reciting the Quran, it's almost something that we used to skip over as children. I don't know if you guys had the same experience. When I was a kid and we used to recite the Quran, we would just say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and then we would start reciting the Quran as if the basmala was not something that mattered. But you can see the amount of depth and importance that this ayah of the Qur'an has. And of course, that would also reflect on us as adults. If we were to do those things as children, then as adults even, we wouldn't recognize the power behind these blessed words. Anyways, moving on swiftly. The next question to ask after having discussed the ba in Bismillah, the question would be, why do we not say Billah instead of Bismillah? You see in other places where, for example, it's mustahab to say in the tashahud, Bismillahi wa billah, walhamdulillah, right? We say with the name of Allah and by Allah. So why does the Quran not start with Billah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim rather than Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Why is it that we start with the ism of Allah rather than Allah himself? The reason for this is Allah cannot be reached except through his names. We cannot connect with that which we don't understand and that which we don't know. 
The essence of Allah is one that can't be reached. Hence why Allah says in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belong the best names, so call him through them. These names are the wasila through which Allah has placed the connection between us and him. And that's why we start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim rather than Billahir Rahmanir Rahim. We are not able to start with Allah. We are only able to start with the name of Allah, that which he has made the means of connection to him. And therefore, when we talk about that but, it is through this name that either we seek help or by this name that we swear by or by this name that we seek its cause and effect or by this name that we begin with. You see, that meaning of that but, of swearing or taking an oath or beginning with that or using it as a cause, it is for the name of Allah, the ism, ism of Allah, not Allah himself. And that's how Allah designed it. And this is a very interesting point. And this is something we're going to come back to and discuss in a lot more depth as the conversation progresses. But for now, just to remember this point. Allah cannot be reached directly. We go towards him through his names. And these are the names that he has designated as a gate for us to approach him with. This is the major point that is to take away from why Bismillah instead of Billah. Then after Bismillah, we have obviously the Lafzul Jalala, we have Allah there. And then we have two names that Allah describes himself by. He says Ar-Rahman and he says Ar-Rahim. The question that a lot of people ask is, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are both representations of Allah's mercy. So why are they mentioned together? Why didn't Allah mention his mercy and his punishment, for example, or his mercy and his anger, for example? He mentioned two names that both represent his mercy. So what is the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? Because both of these words are from the same root as Rahmah, as mercy, right? So the question would be, what makes Ar-Rahman, the, the attribute Ar-Rahman different to the attribute Ar-Rahim, when we know that all of Allah's attributes are infinite? So both of them are describing his mercy. So what makes them different? There are multiple opinions stated by the scholars with regards to the meanings of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. And there's different opinions, but I will quote the two of the most famous opinions here today. The first opinion is what? Is that Ar-Rahman is representative of Allah's vast mercy, that which reaches all of his creation. Whether you are a believer, whether you are a polytheist, whether you, even you are from the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it not true that some of the worst enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to live comfortable lives, used to eat and drink, used to live happy lives, right? Is this not from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That Ar-Rahman is the mercy of Allah that extends above all of his creation. All of his creation take from that mercy. Whereas Ar-Rahim is mercy that is specific to those who he has chosen from his believers. And some of the scholars, they use this ayah of the Quran in order to strengthen this opinion where they say in the Quran, Allah said, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ الرَّحِيمَ And that Allah was Rahim with the believers. He was specifically merciful with the believers. This is the first opinion that Ar-Rahman is the vast extended mercy of Allah and Ar-Rahim is the one that is specific to the believers where, where both of them are infinite. Both of them are infinite mercies. The fact that one is general and one is specific, but both of them are infinite in and of themselves. The second opinion, some of the scholars, what do they say? They say that Ar-Rahman refers to the mercy of Allah that is with regards to and pertains to this world. And if you think about it, the first and the second opinion here, they kind of strengthen each other. Because even when you think about the disbelievers or those who are polytheists or those who are enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy that they receive is in this world. So the scholars say that Ar-Rahman is the mercy that Allah gives to his creation in this world. Whereas Ar-Rahim is with regards to the mercy that is applied on the day of judgment in the Akhirah. And that is where... Ar-Rahim is specific to the believers and therefore the mercy will not be extended to all of the creation. So we see these two opinions and they somewhat strengthen each other. They have the same kind of meaning but different specifications. Another interesting point is also of course how Allah uses this, these two words to open every single chapter of the Quran other than one. He introduces himself as the merciful God. He's 
connecting the believers that read this Quran with his mercy. And he uses a word that shares the same root, the same root word as the word for womb. The womb of the mother in Arabic is Rahim. He uses the same word to represent his mercy. Why is that? If we take a think about the level of mercy that you receive in the womb of your mother. When you're in the womb of your mother, you're fed, you're sustained, you receive everything in return for nothing. That is the mercy that you are given in the womb of your mother. And that is why when Allah uses these words, you can see that his mercy and his love extends beyond comprehension in the way that he will give you that mercy, he will give you that love in return for nothing from you. We see in some of the du'as in Rajab, for example, we say that, we say, oh, the one who gives to the one who doesn't even ask him, just from his love and his mercy towards his servant. That is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the most beautiful thing about the Basmala. That which refers to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connects you to the mercy of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before every single surah other than surah Tawbah. The next point to kind of move on with is that the Basmala, there is something about it that is specific to the Shia. We see this in the narration of Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salatu wasalam, where he mentions the five signs of a believer. One of the qualities that he mentions of a believer is that he says the basmala loudly, al jahru bi bismillah rahman rahim What is this about? What is this? Why is this a defining factor of a believer? While we know that all of the Muslims say bismillah rahman rahim why is it a defining factor for the Shia specifically? The context for this is we see that the opposing sect in Islam do not consider necessarily the basmala to be part of each and every surah. So sometimes we'll see that in their prayers, for example, they will recite the Fatiha and they will recite it with the Basmala. But then the second Surah, they might recite it and they won't say the Basmala again. They will just begin reciting in the middle of the Surah or even from the beginning of the Surah without saying the Basmala. So we see from that that they do not actually consider it to be part of the chapter itself. They consider it to be something that is said, like a dhikr that is said prior to reciting the Surah that Allah has brought down. Whereas the school of Ahlul Bayt salam, we believe that the Basmala is the first verse of every surah. We believe that it is part of every chapter and it must be said, otherwise that surah is not complete. And there are many narrations that explain this, but I'm just going to rely on two today. We have here from Tafsir Al-Ayashi, which is one of our most classical books of Tafsir. And inshallah in the episodes to come, we will be doing some discussions pertaining to books and our classical books where Tafsir al-Ayashi will be part of the discussion inshallah with regards to Tafsir. We have here a narration on page number 19 of the first juz of Tafsir al-Ayashi, a narration from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam from Abu Hamza al-Thumali. He says, Saraqu akram ayatin fi kitabillah bismillah rahman rahim the Imam says they stole the most blessed verse from the Quran, which is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The Imam acknowledges it here as a part of the surahs in the Quran, as a part of the chapters of the Quran. He's speaking here about the Mukhalifin, about the opposing sect, and he is reprimanding them for taking it out of the surahs when they recite it in Salah, for example, or even outside of Salah. They do not consider the Basmala to be part of the chapters of the Quran. And then we have another narration also from Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam on page number 21 of the same volume of Tafsir al-Ayashi. It mentions that بَلَغَهُ أَنَّ أُنَاسًا يَنْزَعُونَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ it, it reached Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam that there are people that are not reciting the Basmala from the chapters of the Quran. فَقَالْ هِيَ آيَةٌ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ أَنْسَاهُمْ إِيَّاهَا الشَّيْطَانِ He says, this is a blessed verse of the Quran from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which shaitan made them forget. Shaitan made it such that it doesn't come on their tongues. So we can see here that this is a defining factor of the Shia that they mention the Basmala as part of every chapter and they consider it to be a verse of each chapter where the Basmala for Surah Al-Fatiha Mathalan for example is different to the Basmala in the Surah Al-Qadr, for example. We should be reciting it as 
and accepting it as different verses of the Quran. Sometimes you'll notice that when I'm presenting on Jum'ah nights, I'll open up a verse of the Quran and I'll say, for example, this is the 70th verse of Surah Al-Baqarah and I'll say, after the Basmala. Some of you might notice that and say, why is he doing that? Why is he saying after the Basmala? It's actually because as followers of the Ahlul Bayt salam, that verse, that 70th verse that I'm mentioning is actually the 71st verse of Surah Al-Baqarah because Bismillah is the first verse of it. But because I can't say this is the 71st verse because if you then go to try and reference it, then you will see another ayah in the Quran. So to make things easier, we mention that it is the 70th verse, but we also include that this is after the Basmala in order to stay in line with the culture of Ahl al-Bayt in that the first verse of that surah is the Basmala. So the next question then would be, what makes the Basmala so significant? Why is it that the Ahl al Salam have given it so much importance to the point that the Imam is saying that this is the most noble verse from the verses of the Quran? Why is it that we are taught to say the Basmala before starting anything in life, even as small as, for example, entering the house or before starting to eat our food or before doing anything in life, we are taught to say the Basmala. What is it about the Basmala that is so great and so significant that we are taught to keep on saying it again and again in our lives. The Basmala is something actually that represents the entire Quran. When we think about the Quran, if there is a slogan or an anthem of the Quran, something that represents the Quran in its entirety, it comes down to the Basmala. We have the narration of Amir Mu'mineen where he says that everything in the Quran is in the Fatiha and everything in the Fatiha is in the Basmala. He mentions that everything in the Quran is summarized in this statement in the Basmala. And this is the basmala that is used as a gate to enter each chapter of the Qur'an. And it is a symbol of the Qur'an, whereby we enter every single surah other than one through these words. So the question then would be, when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and we say we begin or we swear by or by the cause of Allah's name, which of Allah's names is it that this is referring to? We know that Allah has the beautiful names. He has the Asma al Husna. A lot of us are familiar with them, the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thing that we find in the narrations of Ahl Bayt when they speak about the Asma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a clear emphasis on the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is referred to as Ismullah al A'zam, the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is this name that the basmala points towards when we say bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim it is in relation to this name that we are calling towards we are seeking help from we are swearing by it is ismullah al-a'zam even when we think of the name allah allah is a created name allah is not what we worship it is a name it is a name that points towards the essence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this name is this name Allah, the Laftul Jalala, is the creation, a, a created name on the lowest level of creation. On the lowest level of creation is referred to as Allah. At the highest level of creation, that same word Allah is represented by Ismullah al A'zam, which is obviously beyond, beyond our comprehension, beyond all of creation, beyond even the heavens and the arsh. This is the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is that which connects between him and his creation, the Ismullah al-A'zam. We've mentioned, of course, this concept of Ismullah al-A'zam in previous episodes where we spoke about Wilaya Taqwiniya, where we mentioned that the level of cognizance or the level of understanding and knowledge that someone is able to have in the Taqween, in the creation, is represented by the letters of this blessed name. We saw those narrations that mention that the Ismullah al-A'zam is made up of 73 letters and the different anbiya were given different amounts of letters from them. And of course, not all of the letters are the same weight. So we see, for example, we, we, we saw that Nabi Isa, for example, was given two letters from Ismullah al-A'zam and he was able to do a number of miracles through them. And we saw other anbiya until we got to Nabi Adam where he had 25 letters from Ismullah al-A'zam 
And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who had 72 out of the 73 letters. And of course we mentioned of course that this is mudarat with the people while Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has the complete knowledge of Ismullah al-A'zam. And through these letters they are able to do their miracles and they are able to interact with creation in a way of knowledge. This is what we find in the narrations and we've spoken about this in our previous episodes. And the reason why the Ismullah al-A'zam is the, the knowledge that allows you to interact with the creation is because it is from that name, that greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything else was created. And that is why the Basmala refers to this greatest name in every single surah other than Surah At-Tawbah. And this is something that we see in the narrations that the Basmala points towards Ismullah al-A'zam. We see in a narration in volume 90 of Bihar al-Anwar, page 224, we have a narration, the Imam says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, aqrabu ila Ismillah al-A'zam, min sawad al-Ayni ila bayadiha. He says that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is closer to the Ismullah al-A'zam than the black part of the eye from the white. It is, very, it is the closest thing to Ismullah al-A'zam that we have as a representation in this world. It is that which points towards the Ismullah al-A'zam. And we see many narrations like this. There are some narrations that even say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the Ismullah al-A'zam. But this is more accurate in saying that it points towards it because it is that which points towards the higher levels of creation whereby the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is represented by the Ismullah al-A'zam on the highest level of creation as we have mentioned. The next thing would be what is the Ismullah al-A'zam? And of course I'm not claiming to say that I understand what is Ismullah al-A'zam because in order to do that I would have to be from the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. But this is what the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam have taught us with regards to how we can, at our limited understanding, understand what is Ismullah al-A'zam. An important thing to note and something that we've spoken about in previous episodes as well is that names are not the thing itself. We've mentioned earlier as well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's given himself this name Allah on the lowest level of creation. It is not the name that we worship. It is not the ism that we worship. We don't worship the name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only something that points towards him. Now think about it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to something as his greatest name, he says, this is my greatest name, Ismullah al-A'zam. Then that name has to be the name that represents him in the best manner possible. Of course, it is not going to represent him in his entirety because Allah's essence cannot be represented. Allah's essence is beyond all comprehension. But this ism that he refers to as his greatest name, it has to represent him in the best way possible that can be understood, that can be finitely possible. Something that can actually be brought into creation and be attributed to himself and him to call it the greatest name of his. And this is the thing that points towards Allah himself in the greatest way. What is that? It is the first light that he created. It is the greatest thing that he created. It is the first light through which all other lights were created. It is the first creation through which all other creations were created. It is none other than the nur of Muhammad wa al-Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. This is Ismullah al-A'zam from which all of the Asma'ul Husna come from. This is the Ismullah al-A'zam from which the Asma'ul Husna manifest. From there, that is the asl. The Ismullah al-A'zam is the first thing that Allah created. Some of you might be thinking, how do we know that the Ismullah al-A'zam is actually a creation of His? And this is something that we see across the Quran, across the narrations of Ahl Bayt salam, and across our du'as and ziyarat. For example, we say in du'a al-Baha, Allahumma inni as'aluka min asma'ika bi akbariha. O oh Allah, I ask you by your names, by the greatest of your names. وَكُلَّ أَسْمَاءِكَ كَبِيرًا And all of your names are great. Allahumma inni as'aluka bi asma'ika kulliha. O oh Allah, I ask you by your names, all of them. We see in this dua, for example, we say, I'm asking you Allah from your names bi akbariha. From the biggest of them, from the greatest of them. This represents a level of composition, of levels, right? There are names that are smaller and there are names that are greater. So we can see there that that has to be a creation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
does not have levels and composition in his essence. To say that Allah has levels or compositions within his essence is actually shirk. We do not believe that as the Shia of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musalam. We understand therefore that these names are created. They are creations of his. And we see this even cl clearer in the du'as of Rajab. For example, on the du'a of the night of Mab'ath. What do we say? We say, and by your greatest, greatest, greatest name, the one from them that is most noble and the most great, that which you created is a created name. So it remained in your shadow and it does not leave you to go anywhere else. The meaning that we feel here from these lines is that this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is connected to him in a way that no other of his names are connected to him. In the way that it acts as the connection between him and his ibad, between him and his other creations, other than Ismullah al A'zam. It acts as the bridge between Allah's essence and the rest of his creation. It remains in the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is there in his shadow. So it mentions when we talk about our shadows for example our shadows are not ourselves but it is not something that we can leave behind whenever we go somewhere our shadow comes with us right so the ismullah al-a'zam if we were trying to bring the the ma'ana as close as possible this is how we understand it the ismullah al-a'zam is something that is collect, connected deeply to the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that nothing else is connected and it acts as the bridge between Allah's essence and the rest of his creation and it is none other than his greatest name the nur of Muhammad al Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam as Rasulullah very famously says in the narrations that we find in the books of the Shia and in the books of the opposing sects we have the famous narration from Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam says awwalu ma khalaq Allah nuri the first thing that Allah created was my light we see this across our narrations. We saw in the narration of Muhammad ibn Sinan from Imam al-Jawad alayhi salatu wasalam. He says that إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَزَلْ مُتَفَرِّدًا بِوَحْدَانِيَتِهِ ثُمَّ خَلَقَ مُحَمَّدًا وَعَلِيًّا وَفَاطِمًا فَمَكَثُ أَلْفَ دَحْرُ He says that Allah was alone in his oneness. Allah was alone. And he cre then he created Muhammad and Ali and Fatima. These were the first things that he created. We find many different narrations with regards to the first creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the narrations say the first creation was the aql. Another narration will say that the first creation was the pen, the qalam. Some narration will say that the first creation was the lawh. Another narration will say that the first creation was the mashi'ah. Right? There's a famous narration where the imam says, Inna Allah khalaq al bi nafsiha thumma khalaq al ashia'a bil mashi'ah. Allah created the Mashi'a, the will, his will by itself. Then he created everything else through his will. We see that all of these meanings point towards one direction. It is none other than the nur of Muhammad wa al Muhammad. It is the nur of Muhammad wa al Muhammad that is aql. It is the nur of Muhammad wa al Muhammad that is the pen. It is the nur of Muhammad wa al Muhammad that is the Mashi'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are all authentic narrations that all point towards one direction and it is towards the direction of Muhammad wa al-Muhammad So it is this ism of Allah, ismullah al-a'zam, the nur of Muhammad wa al-Muhammad that the Quran refers to in the basmala in each and every surah other than surah al-Tawbah. When we start every single surah it is by that name the ismullah al-a'zam, the haqiqah, the reality of the Muhammadan essence, that is what we begin each and every surah with. This is the gate that Allah has designated for us to enter each and every surah of the Quran. This is the gate that Allah has designated for us before we start to eat our food, before we start to do any activity in our daily lives. We seek help through this great name of Allah, the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no running away from it. Regardless of who you are, every single person, every Muslim that opens the Quran, he has to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And he has to refer to Ismullah al-A'zam, which is none other than Muhammad and Ali and Fatima.
Don't you see these meanings clearly manifested in our du'as like du'a and nudba where we mention Aina Babullah alladhi minhu yu'ta Where is the door of Allah through which it, you enter towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Aina sabab al mutasilu bayna al-ardi wa sama Where is the never-ending connection between the heavens and the earth? Think about all of the meanings we've discussed. Ismullah al-A'zam, acting as the bridge between Allah and His creation. We see this connection. They act as the connection between the Ard and the Sama. We see the same thing with regards to the Bab of Allah. Where is the Bab of Allah through which you enter? We see the same thing with regards to the Wajh of Allah. Aina Wajhullahi alladhi ilayhi yatawajahu al-awliya. Where is the face of Allah through which the saints face towards to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We see the same thing in Ziyad Jami'ah al kabira وَمَنْ قَسَدَهُ تَوَجَّهَ إِلَيْكُمْ And whomsoever wishes to go towards Allah, he turns towards you. The same meaning is across the Qur'an, but in every basmala that we recite every single day in our salawat. This is the level of importance that this basmala has and it is important because of this Ismullah al-A'zam. This is the secret that makes that basmala so significant and so important in our daily lives. And coming back to the narration of Imam Ali والسلام, that we mentioned earlier on where he says that the whole of the Qur'an is summarized in the Fatiha and the Fatiha is summarized in the Basmala and the Basmala is summarized in the Ba' coming back to where we started this conversation the Ba' of Bismillah and he says that everything in the Ba' is in the dot under and he says and I am that dot under the Ba' you see the meanings completely come together. When we hear this narration of Amir Mu'mineen, sometimes we hear it and it is a fadila of Amir Mu'mineen and we become happy, but without understanding the depth behind these concepts that we've just discussed today. With regards to Ismullah Al-A'zam, that name, what does it actually represent? Why did Amir Mu'mineen say, I am the dot under the ba? Did it mean anything or is it just something that we you know, we get happy about because it is a fadila of Amir Mu'mineen. It is much deeper than that. Amir Mu'mineen refers to himself as the Ba' knowing that it is from his nur that the Ismullah al-A'zam is referred to. It is his nur that is being referred to in this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And if you bear in mind the discussion that we had earlier on with regards to the Ba' whether it is Ba' al-Isti'ana, whether it is Ba' al-Qasam, whether it is uh, Ba' al-Sabab, or whether it is Ba'al Ibtida, all of those different types of Ba' is this that it refers to. It is the Ismullah al A'zam that you are either swearing by, or beginning by, or seeking the cause and effect from. It is the Ismullah al A'zam that is the focal point of the Basmala and what makes it so significant, and the slogan and the anthem of the Quran. And this is why Ali ibn Abi Talib, he's saying, whether you are swearing by the name of Allah, whether you are seeking effect through the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you are seeking anything, seeking help, yeah, the Ba'al Isti'ana from the Ismullah al-A'zam, it is me that you are doing those things through. And people try to run from Istighatha. People try to run away from the Ahlul Bayt. They try to pretend like Ahlul Bayt السلام, and Allah are two different directions. You're either pointing towards that or you're pointing towards that. No, you're pointing towards the same reality vertically. Yeah. When we say you point towards Ahlul Bayt السلام, that is the gate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you point towards Ahlul Bayt, you are pointing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has designated them as his gate. He has designated them as his bab and he made them the bab of every single surah of the Quran other than surah at tawbah 114 times in this Quran, Allah refers to the basmala, he refers to the ismullah al-a'zam and he refers to his mercy which is connected to ismullah al-a'zam. And that is why we say that Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam is the greatest manifestation of the wilaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in that he is the individual who we seek closeness to Allah through. And he is the differentiating factor through which we are able to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
I hope that's been an interesting episode and giving you a lot of different perspective with regards to the Basmala linguistically. We spoke about the Basmala with regards to the meanings of Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, and we had a level of discussion with regards to the significance of the Basmala and Ismullah al A'zam. Inshallah, I'll be seeing you again next week where we're going to discuss now the depth of the principles of doing tafsir of the Quran. Of course, we're not going to be able to go into that level of depth because this is, as we always say, Jum'an nights where we are just scratching the surface. And I hope that is able to give you some level of benefit and get you started on your journey of tafsir the same way that we are all looking to get started on our journey to tafsir of the Holy Quran. I'll see you again, inshallah, for that next week. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.